For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It comes down to a simple fact of today's news and technology and reality. There is a virus going around, and you may fear that virus, but you ought to fear God. Because that virus may kill you if you get it. It may kill you. But God has the power to kill and to destroy your soul into hell. Coronavirus is not going to send you to hell. God will. When you die anyway without Jesus Christ, you will step off into eternity in hell, departed by the holiness of God, because you have refused the gift of God, Jesus Christ. All the world today is fearing a little tiny virus. And yet we ought to, what the Bible says, we ought to fear God. You ought to be getting down on your knees right now, repenting the Lord Jesus Christ, the sinner that you are. This virus started in China, a nation that does not want God, does not want Jesus, does not want the Bible, and jails ministers and will execute ministers of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. America is not far from there. America does not want the Bible. America does not want God. America does not want Jesus Christ in the schools. And guess what's closed for two weeks? The schools. The very foundations of America that say we don't want God, he closed your school because of a virus. You better realize that the judgment of God is warning you right now all over the world that Jesus Christ is coming. And you better turn or you better not burn by believing on Jesus Christ, the blessed hope. Because he's coming. And he's coming more sure than any virus. But there is one thing that is purely sure, that's death. The wages of sin is death and we're all sinners. The Bible says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. We are sinners, and because of sinners, we're going to die. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now many of you know that we are here, or try to be here every week, every morning preaching the gospel. Coronavirus is not going to stop me from preaching about Jesus Christ and how to be saved. Where is your devilish DJ this morning? Where is the devil? He's hiding. He's not here playing his music to entertain you. And yet God shows up with the gospel here to tell you, I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to prepare you for the judgment of God if you continue to reject Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you that if you're to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It's that plain and simple. I am commanded by the Bible to be here. <clears throat> yeah, but I love being here. I love preaching the Word of God. I love lifting up Jesus Christ. Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. You know what Satan's doing right now? He's going all in the world and infecting you people with the virus. He's got you scared. You don't even have any toilet paper. And yet we got the paper of the Bible and it still remains closed. There are nations today, entire countries, that no one is allowed of their buildings. They can't go nowhere. And 
I'm going to assume that the least likely thing to be picked up would be the family Bible. This world has rejected God and Jesus Christ and don't expect God to bless you because of your rejection of the Word and Jesus. Don't expect God to bless America when you won't allow God in the schoolroom. You can't take an oath of his sacred word in the courtroom. And you better believe according to the Bible that you will not read. The signs and wonders are going to get worse and worse. And there's coming a time of Jacob's trouble, the tribulation, the great tribulation, seven years of the reign of the Antichrist when the Christians are gone. You will get your time. You will have a time where there will be no Christians to preach Jesus Christ. It's an event called the rapture. And when the rapture happens, those that have believed on Jesus Christ, dead or alive, will be caught up to Jesus Christ in the sky. And we're out of here. Then you'll have your one world government. Then you'll have your 666. Then you'll have your temporary worldwide peace. The Antichrist will have all your answers. And you'll be damned into the lake of fire if you receive his mark in his name. But I'm not here to preach about worldwide doom. I'm not here to preach about the tribulation. I'm not here to preach about, you know, the signs and wonders and though it's happening. I'm here to preach about Jesus Christ. And only by Jesus Christ. On April 21st, 1987, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. I know personally what I'm preaching. I have tasted of the Lord and I have seen that He is good. Though, if I do get coronavirus or if I die anyway, I have no fear of where I'm going when I die. The Bible speaks about to be absent from the body and present with the Lord if you're saved. If you're saved. If you have not called upon Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Bible says you're going to die and you're going to wake up, with lift up your eyes in hell, be it in torment. That's what the Bible says. The H-O-L-Y-B-I-B-L-E that you have not opened in years if you ever opened it. Why don't you open the Bible with all these plagues and see that what the Lord has said is happening. It has happened. It's happening. And it will happen in the future. God of the Bible is a God of prophecy 100%. And the Bible states, many of you will not go the way of the, of the straight gate. The Bible says, many will go the broad way, the highway, straight to hell. And few, few will go the straight gate. Listen, the masses are not going to heaven. If you partake in the Mass, you're not going to heaven. I'm sorry to tell you that not all people go to heaven. Only those that put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. I'm sorry to tell you without Jesus Christ, you will not make it to heaven. And I'm going to hear, I am going to say a word that is not found in many and most modern churches today. You will go to hell without the
the faith and belief and the repentance to Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That he that has the Son has everlasting life, and he that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him, and the wrath of God is hell. There is no hope in the Pope. His country's closed today. And yet the gates to heaven could be opened through the door and Jesus said, I am the door. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. What am I doing with my mouth? I am just confessing Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way. There is no other way. I am the truth. Satan is the liar. And he says, I am the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You're not coming to God as a Baptist. You're not coming to God as a Jehovah Witness. You're not coming to God as the great scientist. If you discover the, the, the cure for coronavirus, that's not going to get you to heaven. The question to get to heaven is, are you and have you been washed in the blood of Jesus? Have you been to the cleansing tide? How are you washed? In the blood of Jesus. I didn't say washed in the river. I didn't say a member of a church. I didn't say you gave money, gave time. Not of works. At least any man should boast. We're told to preach the gospel. And the gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died. According to the scripture and was buried and he arose again the third day according to the scripture that is the gospel we are to preach keep your money but give your soul to Jesus repent of the sinner that you are and through Jesus Christ you can have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And in that book is a reservation by Jesus to get to heaven. I am here to tell you that Allah is not a God. I am here to tell you Buddha can't do nothing. I am here to tell you that yoga will make your legs sore, but they will not get you into the gates of heaven. Even a Baptist. Baptists don't go to heaven. Lutherans don't go to heaven. Catholics don't go to heaven. Those that are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ go to heaven. Evolution is a lie from the pit of hell. And that God created man. And the creator of man suffered and died upon Calvary's cross that man may have eternal life and have it more abundantly. The only means for you to be saved, the only means for you to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. By faith. That is your access to God in glory. And in anything else, you go to hell. It's that plain and simple. What must...
this I do to go to heaven. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What do I do, preacher, to go to hell? Just reject Jesus and do everything you want to do. Eat, drink, and be merry, but tomorrow you should die. But let me warn you, there is no party in hell. Hell is a place of torment. Hell is darkness. You won't see your friends in hell. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Jesus is not going to hell, so there will be no light in hell. Jesus said, I am the water of life. Jesus is not going to be in hell. You will have no water. Is there any fresh garlic over here? Know? Jesus said, I am the door. There is no door in hell because Jesus is not in hell. Jesus said, I am the life. There in reality is no life, though you have eternal life in hell. And the Bible speaks of that is no life. God says about hell, though you live in hell for all eternity, that's no living. Jesus, who is God, says hell was created for the devil and his angels. And Jesus came that he might seek those that are lost. If you are without Jesus Christ, you are lost. Without hope. Without God. Unless you put your faith and trust in Jesus. There is no other means of salvation. You cannot do to get to heaven. You cannot belong to get to heaven. It is all by the finished work of Jesus Christ you get to heaven. God says, be ye holy, for I am holy. You are not holy. The Bible says, for all have sinned. That's not holy. There is none righteous. That's not holy. It, the Bible says, he was made sin for us who knew no sin. That's holy. That the righteousness of God may be through him. The only righteousness you will get is the righteousness of Jesus, and that's by faith and belief and repenting of your sins. You say, preacher, I go to church. So did Judas. Judas had God preacher in the church. What better preacher can you get than Jesus? And Judas died and went to his own place in hell, the Bible says. How's that? And Judas even went to priest to confess his sins, and he still died and went to hell. Ask Judas. Priest can't take away your sin, only Jesus. And if you eat and drink Jesus, as far as the mass, you are a cannibal. Cannibals eat meat and drink blood. You don't go to heaven by eating and drinking Jesus. You go to heaven by faith and belief and repentance of your sin to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ alone. And without Jesus, you will end up in hell. With Jesus, you will end up absent from this body and present with the Lord. And when you get to glory, there's no viruses and there's no diseases. And if you go to hell, there's torment. 
Torment with no medication. Torment with no alcohol. Torment with no drugs. Torment with no relief. But if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus said that when we get to glory, we'll get a brand new body. A body that won't age. There will be no more sin. There will be no more death. There will be no more sorrow, no more tears. We will be in glory, in holiness, and in righteousness without pain. And if you choose to reject Jesus, you'll be in torment. That rich man that went to hell says, oh, if I could just have a little drop of water. Just a little drop of water. And today you can get a whole bottle of ice cold water. You're not going to get that bottle of ice cold. You're not even going to get a warm, hot, cold bottle of water in hell. You get no water in hell. You get no relief in hell. Heaven speaks about a throne where the water of life comes out. There's a crystal river where God is in this boat. There's no river in hell. The Bible speaks about on either side of that river in heaven, there are trees that never die and produce their fruits every month. You're not going to find a farmer's market in hell. So while you are here on this earth before you die, enjoy Johnny's fruit and vegetables because you're not going to get them in hell. Enjoy all your luxury here because you're not going to get it after you die and go to hell. You cannot have alcohol in hell. It burns up. Tomatoes in hell will be burnt up. Water will be evaporated up. But in hell, your time will never be up. When you enter into hell or heaven, it's eternal. There are no more clocks. There's no more time. Forever. I can't say that's a long time because forever has no time. In this stage of 2020, let me tell you the ultimate, the ultimate, the ultimate harshness of you going to hell. You'll have no cell phones or cell phone coverage in hell. You'll be forever looking at your palm. What do I do? You can't see your palm. It's a place of darkness. And yet when we get to glory, there will be no cell phones. And yet God gave us the first cell phone usage ever. It's a cordless device. It's called prayer. And no one bills you for prayer except for church. Hey, I grew up in the church. You had to pay for the, you had to pray for the priest. You had to pray for, you pay for the candle. Now that I'm a born again Bible believing Christian, I pray to God and it costs nothing. And he always listens. Now he may, he may not answer right away. When we call God on the prayer table and say, God. He may answer yes, I'll give you what you want. He may answer no, no, I'm not going to give you that. Or he may answer not now. You never get a busy, busy single with God's prayer line. And you can pray to God while driving your car. It's not illegal yet to pray behind the wheel. It is illegal to pray in your schools. Guess what's out for the next two weeks to, for coronavirus? Schools. 
Aren't you parents happy your children are going to be home for the next two weeks because of a virus? Aren't you going to enjoy your children for an extra break of school? The world has given you. God says, hey, you don't want me and the Bible and Jesus in your school? That's fine. I'll take your kids out of school. How's that? You expect God to bless America and how wicked she is? Do you realize the pornography and the alcohol that Daytona Beach affords with the Bikers Week, Spring Week, and NASCAR and all that? Just Daytona Beach alone is Sin City. Daytona Beach practices in the abominations of the Bible, and you're going to say, God bless America. No, God, don't do it. America represents Satan. Satan doesn't know how to bless, but God knows how to save your soul through Jesus Christ. Satan can't save you. Satan wants to damn you. He doesn't want to be in hell alone. Satan's ministers would never preach, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Satan will never preach how great thou art, God. Satan will teach you how great you are. The great me, myself, and I. And that's what's being taught in the schools today. How great I am. Don't offend me. Oh, that preacher offends me. I hope I offend you to heaven. And I'll keep on offending you if God gives me voice to preach Jesus. I don't care if I offend you. The Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. I am obeying God. You're the one disobeying. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you believed? No. Then you are the rejecter. You are the one that's in rebellion. Not me. I believed on April 21st, 1987. I became a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. My name was written down in heaven. God knows my name. How about you? Does God know who you are? Because let me tell you, if you go into hell, you are nameless. You have no name in hell. It's that plain and simple. Many of you don't even know my name. You just know the name of Jesus. That's all you need to know. I am not here for me. I am not here for my ministry. I am here for Jesus. I am here to tell you how to be saved. I don't want your money. Keep it. Spend it before you die and go to hell. Imagine a preacher telling you to keep your money. Check me for a flu, I may have coronavirus. You have heard today, March 14, 2020, Daytona Beach, a preacher say, keep your money. And believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. How about that? You're not going to hear what I am saying to you on your newscast. This will not be in your headlines or your newspaper tomorrow morning. Because the world hates Jesus. 
The Bible says, marvel not, my brethren. Marvel not if the world hates you. And yet the world, love, love. They come to me, you have no love. I got better love than you got. I've got Jesus and I'm telling you about Jesus. I'm telling you how to be saved. That's the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The gift of God is, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, if you don't want me to preach about your sin, you don't want me to preach about the judgment of God, that's not love. And you tell your preacher I said that. You tell your preacher that the preacher at Daytona Beach Farmer Market says you don't love us because you don't preach of judgment in hell. And when was the last time your preacher said, hey, we're not going to pass the offering plate. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. How about that? Going to church will not save your soul if you're lost. Going to church when you are saved will help you to grow, will help you establish yourself in the Christian family. But it will not save your soul. How about this one? You know what baptism will do you? It will get you wet. If you get sprinkled, it gets you partially wet. If you get immersed, it gets you all the way wet. But it will not get you into heaven. Baptism is a testimony that you have already believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're baptized without the faith and belief in Jesus, you just got wet. That's all you got. And getting wet doesn't save you. And going to church doesn't save you. And there is no hope in the Pope. Only Jesus saves. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And when God said, Jesus is God, by the way, you don't believe that if you're a Jehovah Witness, but you're in damnation anyway. Jesus said, I am the way. There is no other way to God. Man and the devil will come up with other ways, but that don't get you to God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. All right, you know, hey, preacher, I don't believe in God. Oh, I got two verses for you. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. I don't believe him. Prepare to meet thy God. I don't believe in him. Prepare to meet thy God. Just because you don't believe in him. The Bible says prepare to meet him. And if you don't meet him on the grounds of Jesus Christ, you better expect a wrath of God. Because the Bible says that he that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God. I'll tell you another thing that the Bible says about those that don't believe in God. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Yep, I have one of those. You know what God says about you atheists? You're a fool. And he says it twice in the book of Psalms. And right after he says that, there are all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You must come to Jesus in order to get to heaven. Because you're going to die somehow. And it may not be coronavirus. It may be just simple old age. It may be a stroke. It may be getting hit by a Florida driver. There are more odds for that than any other death in Florida. You may get shot with a bolt of lightning, but you will die. 
die in Jesus Christ, in faith and belief in Jesus, and repent. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. He said, well, preacher, what, what are sins? I'm glad you asked that. Nice, great question. I'll answer that question. I'll answer that question with the great Ten Commandments. And I don't need to go through all Ten Commandments to show that you're a sinner. Now, no matter what age you are, the Bible says to honor thy father and thy mother. How well are you doing? Do you respect your parents regard what they do and what they are and what they've done to you? Do you still love your parents after their faults? You have never backtalked your parents. Never. You have never cussed out your parents even when they didn't hear you. You have never thought ill of your parents ever. Oh, you're just a perfect child. Yeah, right. That moment that you disregard and dishonor your parents, the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother, you became a sinner. You need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to repent of your sins. And I'm talking to all ages of people. If you are that 100% goodly child, then you don't need to repent. You are not that 100% goodly child. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Let's try number two. Let's see. Oh, thou shalt not steal. Have you ever taken anything that's not yours without permission? Well, I'll ask them later. No. I'll ask him later and taking it is still stealing. Have you ever taken something that's not yours? You are now classified as a thief. You are now a sinner. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Repent of your sin. All have sinned. How are you doing with being a child of your parents? Have you passed that one? Maybe you never did steal anything. Do you ever steal a cookie from mom? You ever go into your parents' wallet and take a dollar? You ever took a, a dime from your parents? Have you ever taken time from your parents that would have been better for something else? That's two sins. Sinning against honor and father and mother, and thou shalt not steal. You are a sinner, and you need to repent of your sins. Shall I try number three? That's all I need to talk about, three of ten. I don't know what the percentage is, but three out of ten we'll talk about. Maybe four. I love preaching. Number three. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Have you ever told a lie? Now let me give you a basic lie that's coming up. In the, in the next few months. Ready? Here's a big lie. Easter Bunny. That's a lie. That's a religious lie. Have you ever professed the Easter Bunny? You're a sinner. You need to repent. Another lie. Coming up at the end of the year. Santa Claus. That's a lie. How you doing? How about this? Somebody comes up to you and says, How you doing? Well, I'm okay. And you're not okay. You lied. How about this one? Hello, boss. I don't feel good today. I'm not coming to work. And you feel good. You lied. Have you ever told anybody you love them and you don't really love them? Lie. Have you ever told your parents, not me, and it was you? Lie. And then honor thy father and mother. Double whammy. How about that? Shall I do number four? Yeah. Thank you. Who said that? Who said yes? Thank you. I will do number four. Someone said yes. I heard a yes. Hey, if you don't love the preaching, I do. Number four, thou shalt not covet. 
Oh, 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 that one hurts. Because I do that one. Oh, I just got to get the tickets to that concert. Oh, I just got to see that movie. Oh, I got to get that car. Oh, I want that guy to love me. Oh, I want to get a good grade. Oh, I just want that. Oh, I just got to buy that. Oh, I got to make a wish list. Coveting. Oh, I just would love to have a Whopper. Oh, I'd love to have a Big Mac. Oh, I just... Coveting. Desire. How's that one? Have you ever wanted something? Coveting. Sinner. Thou. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Be holy for I am holy. You're not holy when you sin. And that's four. Four of ten. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. So let's try. We'll go half the Ten Commandments today. Yeah, do it. Okay, thank you. Whoever said that. All right, somebody said, yeah, do it. Number five. You've never done this one. No. Thou shalt not kill. Hey, got, oh, you got me on that one. Whoa. Preacher, I never killed anybody. Did you ever want somebody dead? Did you ever say, I'm going to kill you? I wish you dropped dead. Oh, I wish that teacher will die. I hope you die. The Bible will mark you as a killer. And when you wish somebody dead, you want somebody dead, thou has committed, thou shall not kill. You're a murderer. The wages of sin is death. And if you not sin and you end up in a graveyard one day, you're a sinner. The wages of sin is death. Sinners go to the grave. Washed in the blood, sinners go to heaven. Sinners who die in their sins go to hell. How'd you do on half the Ten Commandments? That was half of it. Now let me tell you something that's not being taught in the schools today. Half of ten is five. When you got five of ten, that's half. Five on this side, five on that side. How do you doing? Are you perfect? And then you are equal to Jesus Christ, and only Jesus Christ was perfect. You're not Jesus. You are a sinner. In need of Jesus. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Now listen. Listen now. Belief in Jesus will not save you from Corona. Whatever her name is. Faith in Jesus will not make your life wonderful. Not when the Bible says all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Oh. But faith and belief will change from your destination from heaven to hell. Now you will get blessings, let me tell you that. But I'm not going to promise you anything. I will promise you, your friends will walk away. I will promise you that maybe your family won't like you. But I will promise you, your faith and belief in Jesus, you will go to heaven. I promise you that. And your faith and belief in Jesus doesn't mean you have to get up on the street corner and preach. 
You can pass out gospel tracts. My daughter hasn't said one word. She's saved, and she's doing what the Bible tells her to do. How's your children in the world and in the devil without hope and without God? How are your children doing? I'm not saying my daughter's perfect. Never say that. For all have sinned. Jesus Christ came to seek that which is lost. That's you. I'm talking to you if you've never believed on Jesus. I hate to say it, but without Jesus, life is hell. Eternal life. And you will not get to heaven without Jesus. You won't. I affirm that you will not get to heaven without Jesus. I certify that. Without Jesus, you don't go to heaven. By the way, there's no purgatory. The Bible says there's only two afterlife. Heaven through Jesus Christ. And hell without him. And this world is not hell. Because you get nice fruit. So this is watery fruit. You don't get that in hell. Johnny has some wonderful corn over there. You won't get that in hell. Johnny's going to heaven, so he ain't going to sell his produce in hell. God says, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be made white as snow. You have got a sin condition. Yes, you. And your sin condition is terminal. Terminal means you're going to die with your condition. The wages of sin is death. Sin will kill you. Jesus will save you. You'll still die in Jesus, but you won't go to hell. But there is that likely choice. If you die when the rapture happens, you won't die. There's a possibility at one period of time, Christians will not die. The rapture will happen. When? I don't know. But you must be born again. Jesus said that. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Go ahead. Don't listen to the preacher. Whoa. And God won't listen to you. God will tell you, depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. That's God. That's in the Bible. But Lord, didn't I give money? Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But Lord, I was good. There is none that doeth good. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But oh Lord, I'm Catholic. There are no Catholics in heaven. Depart from ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Lord, I went to church. Depart from ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. There are good church goers in hell today and will go to hell. Why? 
because they have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Get saved, then go to a Bible-believing church and grow in the Lord. But don't go to church unsaved thinking God's pleased. I guarantee you're not going to hear that in your Sunday morning pulpits in America. And I'm not the heretic. That preacher is. You're going to die one day. The wages of sin is death. You are a sinner. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You are not good enough, for there is none that doeth good. And in that you will go to hell unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. How's that? That is the gospel. That is the means of salvation. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And there was no need for Easter bunny and chocolate eggs and Cadbury. Those have nothing to do with the Bible. Easter is pagan. It is Roman. It is not Bible. Easter is the goddess Estar, which is the god of love. The god of sex. That's why you got chocolate and bunnies and hearts for Estar. Esther and Estar can't save your soul, and there is no hope in the Pope. You go to hell with him. I tell you the truth, and have I become your enemy because I speak the truth. You're terrible for rejecting Jesus Christ. And you'll be going to a terrible place without Jesus. I tell you the good news. Good news is, I'll tell you what good news. It means the gospel. Gospel means good news, good tidings. And that good news is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the good news. The terrible news is when you speak about God the way you do. In rebellion. That's the terrible news. And notice how people like that will speak into your ears quietly. I proclaim on the rooftops. Jesus saves. And only Jesus saves. You will not get to heaven without Jesus. You will fall short. That when you fall, you fall into the pit of hell. And we are here and preach that you may not go to hell. We don't want you to go to hell. We want you to believe. And we want you to believe on Jesus. Come on out. We'll take it. We'll, I'll turn off the, the microphone. I'll turn off the camera. I'll open up that Bible. And we'll look at what God wants you to do to be saved. And today you can be pleasing to God through Jesus. Step on out. Make today the day of your new birth. Born once, 
die twice. Born twice, die once. And you may not even die if the rapture happens. If you want to obey God, it's to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That's believing God. What's the, what's the will of God? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. What did Jesus do? He suffered and died. According to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That you might have life. Jesus came to seek that which is lost. Are you lost? When you're lost, you're without hope and without God. Most miserable. The wages of sin is death. And that could be this, it's still morning. It could be this morning you'll die. And you have heard the gospel. And you're not going to be able to tell God, well, God, I never knew, because I have not given you any more excuse. You have known that Jesus now is the only ways of salvation. You have heard that religion can't do it. Only Jesus can do it. You can't say, God, I never knew. God will say, hey, I sent the preacher. I sent the gospel. What do you tell us to do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Saved from what? Hell. You're not okay without Jesus. You do not have good intentions without Jesus. Your future is bleak without Jesus. When the Bible says you're without hope, alone in this world, without God. Now again, salvation is not going to make your life hunky-dory, wonderful, and great. They're not all going to love you. The world hated Jesus. The other world gave Jesus, they gave him a cross. You know what many people would love to do to me here in Daytona Beach? They would love to kill me. They will shut that preacher up at all costs. I know it. The Bible says it. But still, it's the word of truth. I have nothing to do with salvation. I'm just the messenger. And the message is that Jesus is the only hope. The Bible calls him the blessed hope. And without Jesus, you are lost. And Jesus came to seek that which is lost. Come on, examine yourself for a moment. Are you perfect? And if you said yes, you're lying. And lying won't be your pants on fire, it'll be you on fire in hell. You're not perfect. Even as a born again Bible believing Christian I am, I'm still imperfect before a holy God. I still need to repent of my sins. 
And if I'm saved and righteous through Jesus Christ, what are you without Jesus? Unclean. Unwashed. No matter how old you are. Like I said, it's still morning. Death may come before afternoon. We don't know when it's going to happen. But I do know if you die without Jesus, whatever age you are, you go into hell for all eternity. Get that other chair. Wouldn't it be horrible to enter into hell when a preacher said how not to go? It'd be like if you went to somebody and say, excuse me, can you give me directions? And you didn't follow those directions. And you got lost. You are lost. And I am giving you directions. And if you don't obey the directions out of the Bible, you will remain lost and find yourself in the absence of God in hell. You are not okay without God. It won't be cool without God. It will be extremely hot. There is no climate control in hell. You can't say, oh, Lucifer, turn the AC on. There is no AC. Oh, Lucifer, can I have some drinks? There's no drinks down here. Oh, Satan, they said there's going to be a big party down here. I lied. You know, the Bible says that Satan is the father of lies. As Jesus is the truth. Satan is the liar. He wants you to think that hell is all great and wonderful. The Bible says opposite. Don't believe Satan's lies. Don't even believe me. Believe the part of me when it's the Bible. There it is. The Bible's open. You want to pick it up and read it? There it is. Go ahead. It's free. I got a stool here. You want to pick up the Bible, open it up and read it? You can sit on the stool and read the Bible. I will not stop you. Your school will try to bring the Bible into your school openly. Oh, that's right. You're not even going to school the next two weeks. When you stand before the judge in the courtroom, say, hey, I want to put my hand on the Bible. <laughs> yeah, right. No Bible allowed in the courtroom anymore. Why is it you can't give a student a Bible in the school, but you can give a prisoner in prison a free Bible? I know. I've been in the prison ministry for eight years. I can bring prison, I can bring Bibles into prison. Isn't that interesting? And the way to correct a child is through the Bible, not public school. Not when the public school teaches and preaches the abominations of God. The proper sex in the Bible is the marriage bed. Any other teaching is an abomination of the Bible. Marriage is one man and one woman. Any other teachings than that is abomination of God. 
And you tell your teacher I said that. And you tell her we're here approximately 9 a.m. every Saturday morning here. And I will tell it to their face and I will show it in the Bible. Oh, I don't believe the Bible. Then you're going to hell. You got to believe the Bible to be saved. The Bible speaks about salvation in Jesus Christ. Ninety percent of what I am saying comes out of the Bible. You don't know it because you don't open the Bible. Shame on you. Death is coming. Why is there death? Because the wages of sin is death and you have sinned. That's why. Imagine someone saying, I'm not a sinner that has life insurance. That's an oxymoron. Yeah, I like that. Oxymoron. I like that. Yeah, remember that. Because you're going to die because you are a sinner. The wages of sin. Where do you think diseases come from? Well, all, all the products they put in the food in that today. Yeah, and that's all because of sin. Because God cursed the earth because Adam and Eve sinned. You believe in Adam and Eve? Look at the fruit stand. Not better than... Listen, Adam and Eve's a lot better than in the beginning was nothing and here we are today because of the Big Bang. And the monkeys were in the jungle one day and found themselves a razor and they shaved all their hair off and here we are with a PhD. That's evolution in, in a nutshell. And that's what's taught in the public school. Nutshell religion. Where the Bible says, in the beginning God created. How's that? Even the Pope doesn't believe that. Major of your religion denominations deny Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. I did a whole thesis on it. I ought to know. I studied it. You can't even read the Bible to tell me so. And the Bible says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Acts 16, 31. There's the Bible. Check it out. My daughter will help you find Acts. It's plain and simple. Say, preacher, what are you doing? I am going in all the world and preaching the gospel. I am lifting up my voice like a trumpet and declaring to my people, God says, their iniquity. And when it comes to sin, you're full of it. I'm a sinner saved by grace. And if I'm a sinner saved by grace, and I still got to confess my sin, what do you think you are without God and without Jesus? Lost. And Jesus came to save that which is lost. You're not good enough. When the Bible says there are none that do, there is none that doeth good. No, not one. There are none righteous. No, not one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God is long-suffering. He's not willing that any should... God does not want to cast you into hell. He's not willing that any should perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes it shall not perish. How does God prevent you from perishing? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What must I do to go to hell, preacher? Reject Jesus Christ. What must I do to believe this heaven you're preaching about? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And then when you die, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Because of what Jesus has done, and not what you have done. For by grace are you saved through faith. It is not of ourselves, not of works. Least any man should boast. So unless you are perfect, and let me tell you, you are not. You don't need this message. And since you are not perfect, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever you are, whatever you are, You are a sinner without hope. Think you've got hope? The Bible says the blessed hope is Jesus. You know what blessed means? Happy. How come when people sneeze they don't say, Allah bless you? How come when you sneeze, they don't say, Pope Gregory, bless you? Because they're not gods. You say, God bless you. The God of the Bible. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who blessed you when you sneeze. The Bible says again, prepare to meet thy God. And if he's not your God, he is your God because he created you. He made you. And he suffered and died and bled for you according to the scriptures. And without God, your eternal life will be hell. no mercy and grace after the grave without Jesus. The devil doesn't know how to show that. There is no love outside of Jesus because the devil has no love. He sings about it on the AM and FM radio but he doesn't know about it. Imagine the devil singing about something he doesn't know about.
That's almost bad. People don't read the Bible, come up and try to rebuke me. But the Bible said you do it. The Bible says also to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And if you don't do that, the Bible says you will be cast off in the lake of fire that burneth forever. And forever is a very long time. Because you have chosen to reject God and His Word. You know, if I had a table up here that said free hamburgers, and you didn't get yourself a hamburger when it's free, hey, you lost out. When God says, I got a free gift for you, the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, and it's free. Keep your money. Take your money and buy Johnny's vegetables. I don't want your money. Imagine a preacher saying that. A preacher said that he don't want your money. March 14, 2020, Saturday morning, Daytona Beach Farm Market. I heard a preacher say, keep your money. But believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Tell him I said that. See, your money can't save you. God doesn't take checks, money order, credit cards. He takes nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away your sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Be a Baptist. And you can be a Baptist in hell. But be washed in the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Come to Calvary, not church. There is no, or there was no church upon Calvary's mount. There was God suffering, dying on the cross without the Easter bunny and the chocolate eggs and the colored eggs. And if your church has an egg hunt this Easter, your church is pagan and tell them, I said that. Because Aster, Estar, is a Roman goddess. And she has nothing to do with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When Mary came to the tomb that morning, she didn't see the Easter Bunny. She saw two angels without wings proclaim, He is not here. He is risen. He is not here. He is risen. That's the difference between religion. Your religion remains dead. But Jesus Christ arose from the dead and is seated alive at the right hand of the Father today, right now. And he may be getting ready to get up and go to get his church. Maybe, I don't know. But he will one day. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. Where grace and mercy were free. Come to Calvary and be washed in the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. You must be born again. Yeah. Oh. 
You're going to come to God. Only through Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, if you're to be without Jesus, the great white throne judgment has Jesus on the throne, not God. Though Jesus is God and God is Jesus. And the books were open. And every man was judged out of the works that were written in those books. And the book of life was open. And whosoever was not found written in the land's book of life was cast into the lake of fire that burneth forever. Death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. Oh, yeah, I'll right in here. And you don't have to go. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Don't fear coronavirus. It's not coronavirus that will kill you and bring you into hell. It's coronavirus that will kill you and God cast you into hell. But getting hit by a car can also kill you and send and God send you into hell. A heart attack can kill you and God will send you to hell. But Jesus Christ is able to save you and call you out of hell. You won't go to hell by faith and belief in Jesus. I guarantee you that. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. You're a sinner. And if you die in your sins, you don't go to heaven. You will not go to heaven. In case you got tired of me saying hell. But hell is a real place. Just as much as the farmer's market is a real place. If there's no farmer's market, then there's no hell. And there is also a heaven. And you can only get to heaven through Jesus, and Jesus is real. And he's really God. And he's really the Savior. And you really need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're not, you're really without hope and without God. And hell will be a really good place for you to be. Because in hell there's no God. There's no Bible. There's no preaching. There's no Jesus Christ. There's no mercy. There's no grace. And that's where you get to go without Jesus. Hell. Hell, 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 hell. Don't go to hell. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Only Jesus saves. Imagine someone telling you to go to hell, and you're here a preacher saying, don't go to hell. Huh? 
and we're not going to force you. It's a free will by your choice. I am doing what God has told me to do. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Now it's up to you to do what God wants you to do. Believe on Jesus. And if you don't believe on Jesus, you're rejecting what God wants you to do. Not me. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. That creator went up Calvary's hill and suffered and died according to the scriptures. The creator that made us was buried in a tomb. And the creator, three days and three nights according to the scripture, came out of that tomb alive. And over 500 people saw him. That's the eternal witness. Five hundred people saw the resurrected Jesus. And not one pope has come out of the grave yet. Mayor Beck, Mayor... Mary Baker Eddy is still in the grave. Charles Russell is still in the grave. But Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you want hope? Come to the blessed hope, Jesus Christ. Come, we'll show you how to get saved. And you don't have to open your wall. You just have to come to Jesus, the sinner that you are. Acknowledge to Jesus who you are, a sinner. One sin makes you a sinner. And right now the ultimate sin that you are doing is you are rejecting Jesus Christ and the rejection of Jesus Christ is what gets you to hell. There's one thing in common in hell. They rejected Jesus. The most vicious evil, wicked people are in hell, so are the good, educated, religious people are in hell too. Because you and them have rejected Jesus Christ. And those that are in glory are those that have received Jesus Christ as their Savior by faith and belief and nothing else. By the blood. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Now Islam will tell you by the blood of infidels. That's not Bible. That's according to the Quran or crayon, crayon something. Maybe they got a book you can color the little pictures in or something. Allah's not God. He's the devil. God has told no Christian to slay no blood but to preach the gospel. To be saved. And I am violating the Allah rule of preaching against Allah. But there is 
is no rule against preaching against God. You'll handle God yourself. Prepare to meet thy God. Meet him through Jesus Christ, and you'll be blessed and wonderful and great. Only two dollars for the Domenos, guys. Domenos, buy back home growing beef steak, Domenos. Only two dollars today, guys. Prepare to meet God without Jesus, and it's the wrath of God. And God's wrath is hell. And then death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the Lamb's book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Where the devil and the false prophet will be for all eternity. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Again, I said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Come now. Thank you. Let us reason together, God says. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Whiter than snow. Yes, whiter than snow. You can become righteous in God, in God, through Jesus Christ, who is God. And without Jesus Christ, you will not go to heaven. You cannot and will not and hope not to make heaven without and rejecting Jesus Christ. You won't do it. You can't do it. God has set forth the standard. And that standard is Jesus Christ. Stop using His name in vain and call upon it in salvation. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world. And salvation is fully free. I can take a Bible and lead you to Jesus Christ right now, and I will charge you, and God will charge you nothing. You got to come as the sinner you are. Come. Come and believe on Jesus. Come and repent of your sins. Come. Don't be afraid. The devil wants you afraid. The devil does not want you to come to God. The devil does not want you saved, but God says, Come now. Because Jesus is the Savior, man. Jesus is the only way that will save your soul. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Blessed name of Jesus. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. Jesus. That's why this message has been brought to you by the Bible. And God approves of this message. The government can't save you, but Jesus can. The government can't even stop coronavirus. 
but Jesus can stop you from going to hell by faith and belief. And if you get it, He may make you better. He may. He may not. I'm not going to give you no promises. But if you were to die in Jesus of the coronavirus, you'd be absent from the body and present with the Lord. How's that? If you die in Jesus, you go to heaven. It's that plain and simple. What did that guy say? said that you shouldn't be preaching the gospel because you're so concerned. I'm not trying to back off. The Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel, sir. It's a Bible command. Mark chapter 16. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Imagine you telling me not to do what the Bible says to do. Wow! I bet you have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, which God said. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Look at that. You're only a Christian by being washed in the blood. And Christians are told, go eat all the world and preach the gospel. It's so plain and simple that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Come. Come and be saved. I'm not going to bite you. God ain't going to bite you. You know what happens when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Luke chapter 15, the angels rejoice in it. You want to make the angels happy? Luke chapter 15, come and be saved, and the angels rejoice in heaven. Come. Stop fighting the Holy Spirit that's in your heart. Now, come and believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Take one of these gospel tracts that my daughter has and read it and do what it says to be saved. Come! Come and be saved. Come and believe. Come to God through Jesus. And go in all the world and preach the gospel. That's what God wants. For with the man believeth with the heart. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I'm preaching that. I'm just confessing how well Jesus is. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. And the only access you have to God. Blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. And that eternal life is in Jesus. You can know it. You can.
can know today that you're saved. You can know by God that salvation can be given to you today through Jesus Christ. You can get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life today through Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Today, you may not have tomorrow. Coronavirus may get you. Death may come knocking on your door. Fear God. Fear him that is able to cast your soul into hell. Fear God. And then when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, there's no fear in God. The Bible says when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, God adopts you as a child of God. You become a child of the Father. And that's only through Jesus Christ. You have no better hope than the blessed hope. And that blessed hope is in Jesus. There's coming a day you're going to stand before God. Stand before God through Jesus. And maybe you'll hear, well done. But stand against God. And you will hear, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. That's the holy, loving God telling you to go to hell because you have rejected Jesus Christ. <gasps> You're not going to get that in the pulpit. You're not going to get that on an Easter sunrise service. You are lost. And Jesus came to seek that which is lost. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. That's what salvation is all about. It's all about Jesus and you, the sinner. A Christian is a man that has been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ alone. Not of what we have done, but what Jesus has done. You're not going to be saved because you're good. The Bible says that there is none that doeth good. You can't go to heaven because you do something. The Bible says not of works. Least any man boast. For by grace are you saved through faith. You can't hope so to get to heaven. You've got to know so. It's not what you know. It's who you know. And to know Jesus as your Savior. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Religion can't save you when Jesus said, He is the way. Religion is dead, buried. 
Jesus Christ arose from the grave according to the scriptures and is seated at the right hand of the Father. The Baptist church is not seated at the right hand of the Father today. There is no Pope seated at the right hand of the Father. Jehovah Witnesses are not at the right hand of the Father. Jesus Christ is. And He is able to save your soul. If you come to Jesus, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to Him as a sinner that you are. We're going to get ready to leave. That doesn't stop you from calling upon God. Come to God, the sinner that you are, and ask for forgiveness. Come. and believe. Our church tracks, they have the phone number and information on the back. Go online, look up Anchor Baptist Church in Oak Hill, Florida. But you can call upon Jesus Christ even when we're gone. Just come to Him, the sinner that you are. Come to Jesus and believe. And believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. If you're lost, Jesus came to seek that which is lost. He came for you. He came for you. And you can be saved. And without Jesus Christ, you're not saved. You're without hope, alone, and without God. And you will die without Jesus. And you'll wake up in hell, in torment, forever, eternity. Whereas you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved.